In the northwest of England, in the county of Cumbria, lies a region known as the Lake District. Spanning 900 square miles is arguably the most picturesque, peaceful and awe-inspiring landscape in all of England. Settling between its 16 lakes, you'll find welcoming small villages, some unique local delicacies and thousands of epic hiking routes conveniently suited for all skill levels. In this video, we invite you to join us during our time here, showing you four very different hiking experiences, food you won't want to miss, all the best villages to visit on your way, and how certainly not to row a boat. Plus, at the end, I'll list off my personal top tips for everything that I wish I knew before embarking on this trip. This is Suitcase Monkey, spending five days in England's Lake District. After six hours of driving like a boss, we finally arrived at our hotel in Ambleside. Now, there is an abundance of great accommodation in the Lake District, but we chose this one due to its reasonable price, close proximity to water, and central location to most of the sites we wanted to visit. Just a short walk from our front door sat Lake Windermere. Stretching over 10 miles, Windermere is England's largest lake, with Ambleside marking its northernmost point. Since we arrived mid-afternoon, today was more about getting familiar with our local area, and after a 20-minute meander, we explored Ambleside's main town. There are arguably two local foods that you have to try when in the Lake District and the first was found in this sweet shop. Sitting alongside some lovely looking fudge and chocolate was Kendall Mint Cake, a peppermint flavored snack made mostly out of sugar and glucose. It's considered as the original energy bar and is still popular with climbers and hikers today. Taste wise, there's not much like it to be fair, so it's definitely worth a try for the experience. It's very minty and even though the first bite is relatively hard, the glucose dissolves quickly, filling your mouth with sugary goodness. To set the scene for this vlog, we are by no means experienced hikers, so any energy boost we could get from Kendall Mint Cake would be appreciated. There was a very real chance that at least one of us would collapse during this trip. Our first full day tomorrow would be to my favorite village in the Lake District, and it would also mark the starting point to our first hike up a mountain. Looking out our hotel window, it seemed the weather was still on our side. The Lake District is, after all, the wettest part of England. We sat down for a full English breakfast, then made our way to Grasmere. It was still early in the morning and we quickly moved past all the interesting spots as we'd return here later. Our immediate goal was to reach the summit of Helm Crag. Rising 400 meters, this is a relatively popular hike, so we thought it best to start here, since if we did have a heart attack, there would be someone nearby. Indeed, one of my favorite things about being on a countryside walk is that moment where you pass another human being. This man here actually acknowledged my existence. We certainly weren't in London anymore. Armed with the motivation of a total stranger saying hello, we carried that through our footsteps towards Helm Crag.
It was on our way back to Grasmere that I started to draw similarities to our time in the Cotswolds, where you would see houses made out of the local land. In this region, it is slate that peppers the landscape, visually tying all villages together. As mentioned before, Grasmere was my favourite village, and probably the most popular in the county. It's well known for shops, art galleries, pubs, cafes, and just generally everything you would want from an English countryside village. Grasmere was also home to the poet William Wordsworth, one of the founders of English Romanticism in the late 18th century. His house and grave are both within walking distance. We also stopped by at this lovely little cafe that overlooked the river below. A tasty spread of simple food dishes made for a great lunch, and we certainly hit the jackpot with our seats. Grasmere is also home to the second quintessential food that you have to try when in the lakes. That being Sarah Nelson's Grasmere Gingerbread, which is the best gingerbread you're ever likely to taste. Sarah started baking the spicy, chewy gingerbread in the 1850s in this very cottage and selling it to the locals. That tradition still continues today, albeit with queues and a slightly wider net of customer. It's different to any other gingerbread that I've tried before, and if you're not usually a fan, I think it's still worth checking out, as you may be surprised. The recipe is a heavily guarded secret and can only be bought here or through their website. Still with some time in the day, we made the short drive up to Thirlmere. If it's on your way, I would definitely suggest this stop as it's a quick walk down to the shore and provides the perfect respite. Looking out our hotel window, it seemed like a cloudy but dry day. This gave me all motivation needed to indulge in a full English breakfast. But the big news was that my feet were still holding up, so we were ready to go again. Today's journey would be a little different. The goal was to visit Keswick, an old market town that sits at the top of Derwent Water. To encourage another picturesque walk, we purposely parked the car at the south end and walked alongside the lake for a couple of hours. This is a really simple flat walk, with the views making every step worth it. One interesting note to point out here is that out of its 16 lakes, only one is officially a lake by name, with the rest being meres or waters. But although there are some technical differences, I wouldn't get too hung up on the naming, outside of it being kinda interesting. Likewise, I used the term mountain earlier, and again, although technically true in some circles, the word fell is actually more appropriate, especially in the Lake District. At the north end of Derwent Water, you'll find Keswick, a pretty small town that hosts a popular market, running every Thursday and Saturday. Similar to Grasmere, you'll find plenty of hiking shops, art galleries, and pub grub. But it was whilst in Keswick that I clocked on to just how many dogs there are up in the lakes. 
They are everywhere. Take this clip here, for example. For the eagle-eyed, and you can count them, there are 12 dogs within eyesight. And when you're trying to set up that perfect insta shot, they just wander by without a care in the world. One thing that can be fun, however, is the opportunity to impress a loved one with your rowing skills on Derwent water. This hour had all the romance of DiCaprio in the Titanic. And yes, it did have more in common with the end of that movie, but it took me 30 minutes to realize that rowing a boat backwards is a lot easier than rowing it forwards. So do keep that in mind. With blue skies outside, I peruse the many, many choices on the menu, finally opting for the full English breakfast. After two full days of walking, the body was no longer 100%, but today would turn out to be our best hike yet. Our first destination was to Aero Force Waterfall. Probably the most popular fall in the Lake District, this 70-foot drop is only a few minutes from the nearby car park. Although it's this waterfall that gets the glory, it's worth pointing out that there's more to see just a 10-minute walk north up the river. It's much more quiet and spread out here, with countless mini-falls making an area greater than the sum of its parts. After a brief rest, we made our way north again. We knew when we started that this would be our longest hike so far, but we were yet to learn that it would also become our favorite. Later that evening for dinner, we visited the two most popular built-up areas of Bowness and its neighbour, Windermere Village. Bowness is the hub for sailing and water sports, and by far has the most restaurants, pubs and things to do. The world of Beatrix Potter is one of the most famous attractions here, especially for those with children. We mostly use these two locations as dining hotspots, which I'll say more about in the tips section at the end of this video. Our last day was a cloudy and damp one, and my entire body had given up. There was only one way to push through, and that was cheesy beans on toast. We had one last challenge to climb, so we gritted our teeth and started to hike. Our final goal would be to reach Easedale Tarn, a peaceful glacial lake that's believed to have filled with water when the ice melted 11,000 years ago.
so I think it's pretty easy to say that we had a great time in the Lake District. And now I'd just like to share some things that I wish I'd known before visiting, which will hopefully make your trip a little easier. If you yourself have visited the Lake District, then please share your tips as well, as these are all based on just our one experience. If you've gotten this far, please also leave a like below, since it really helps the channel and subscribe if you enjoy this sort of travel vlog. And with that, let's dive right into it. So I'll start with some tips specifically for visiting Grasmere, since if you are short on time, this is where I would suggest you visit. Our first and last hike started from here, so it really does have everything. To park the car specifically for hiking, I'd suggest the Langkrig Hotel. The cost of parking can be redeemed for food and drink at the hotel, and it was a great rest spot after the hike. Now we walked past the gingerbread shop four times and it always had a long queue, apart from its last hour of trading. It was tasty enough though that it still would have been worth the wait, but do bear the queues in mind. There was also a side entrance that people didn't seem to be aware of that sold most of the same products as inside, so do check if that's open too. The hotel we stayed at was literally in the middle of everything we visited in this video. Grasmere, Ambleside and Bowness were all a 15 minute drive away, with Keswick and Aero Force being 30 and 40 minutes away. The included breakfast was clearly very good, Lake Windermere just a minute away, along with its ferry that can take you further south. For our date, the room and breakfast was £120 per night. I'll leave a link in the description below to check prices for your dates, along with other options in the area. On the subject of paying for stuff, since Covid, England is becoming more and more a cashless society, which personally speaking for me is great. But for international tourists, just something to keep in mind, as several places wouldn't take any cash at all. Amongst others, the pub we visited in Keswick was card only, the gingerbread shop was card only, and even the 40p entrance fee for the public toilets were all contactless. But don't melt your gold down just yet. On the flip side, some parking machines are still coins only, so it's worth having a stack of change in the morning. Most machines did have options, but the one we parked at for Derwent Water was coins only. It's also definitely worth downloading both the pay by phone parking and Ring Go app before arrival. Between them both, they covered most car parks and allowed you to top up your meter remotely. I say download them before since the countryside isn't known for its fast internet speeds and downloading a 100 megabyte app is not fun on 0.5G. Overall, on the subject of driving, I actually found the roads to be a lot easier to drive than, say, the Cotswolds trip that we had last year. There weren't as many tiny countryside roads, and all destinations were connected by dual carriageway. As a direct comparison to the Cotswolds as a holiday, I think the landscapes are definitely more epic in the Lake District, but the Cotswolds feels more uniquely English, if that makes any sense. So it depends on what is more important to you as a countryside getaway. Also, for the countryside, I was actually very surprised by how many buses there were. It clearly wasn't London frequency, but they seemed good enough that you could do most of what we did without a car. It would lose a lot of the convenience, obviously, but I'd be interested to hear in the comments below how people have found using buses around this region. One village that didn't make this vlog was Glen Riding. This was a lovely little place, just a few minutes drive from Aeroforce Waterfalls. We found a nice little coffee shop to refresh our energy levels and was perfect as a quick stop. Not that this was a massive issue, but there were a couple of nights where it was hard to find a table at a restaurant. So if you really have your heart set on somewhere in particular, book ahead when possible, even if it's just a few hours. I'm never sure at the moment how much of this is COVID related, but on one night we called four different places and were turned down by all of them. Which, yes, almost led me to say, do you know who I am? But I didn't. Despite a seemingly long queue, the place we did visit in Windermere was great, and I would recommend it if you're in the area. The staff were switched on and efficient, the vibe good, and the food really tasty and reasonably priced. For any novice hikers out there like ourselves, here's a few potentially obvious but definitely useful tips. For all our routes, we use the All Trails app. It's how I found most of the treks in the first place, and then how we navigated them on the day. 
There is a paid pro version which allows you to download the map for offline use, but for us, we had just enough signal that we were able to follow the routes easily. Second, bring plenty of water. We just bought a bunch of bottles on day one and then refilled them with tap water each day after. Plus, Kendall Mint Cake really does give you an energy kick. Do not underestimate it. There are loads of hiking shops in every town and village we visited that all stock anything you don't already have and didn't even know you needed. And generally we found that with such competition, they usually were pretty well priced. So buying at the last minute isn't necessarily the worst idea. Hiking boots are the number one, but we also bought some hiking socks while we were there and they really helped too. I've also heard enough people rave about walking sticks that I'm sure they make a difference. Prices for those range from £10 to over £100, so I'll leave that choice up to you. So congratulations on making it to the end. Please leave a like and a comment below, which tells YouTube to suggest this to more people like yourself. I've now also got 11 Patreon videos, including vlogs from Oxford, London and Kent, as well as a monster 35 minute video explaining my entire editing process. Until the next one, thanks for watching. Suitcase Monkey.